Yeah, I was riding with my sister. My sister said something funny, and I said, I forget what she said. It's like, it's like we were, we saw something, and she said, I have one of those. And I looked at her and said, Your mom has one of those. <laughs> She's like, So does your mom? Well, our our, our friend is a little. It's funny taller. because you know it was my sister. Your sister, yeah. Our our friend who's a little taller than we are and has a, a daughter who with red hair, um, and mm. glasses and works as a computer guy. Um, I once witnessed his mother call him a son of a bitch, <laughs> and she just turned. He just turned and looked at her. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, I mean. Shut up and walked away. Yep. <laughs> I have an awful story about her, about his mother. I have a few. I I, I can't tell it though. Oh. <laughs> I told her off once. <laughs> like we were helping him move, um, and like you know she showed up. <laughs> her husband and like, you know, his truck and, you know, trailer to load stuff on. And she's, you know, carrying stuff in like, like he's out there, like, you know, like this guy's stepdad's out there, like literally rebuilding the trailer in the parking lot. Right. Like the trailer had fallen apart on route. And like, he's doing that. I'm moving like, you know, giant boxes of books and like, you know, huge CRT televisions and like really heavy stuff on my own, you know, down a flight of stairs and out to the thing. She's carrying, like, the toaster, you know, the blender, a gallon of milk, that kind of thing. So, you know, after doing this for half an hour or so, I sat down to catch my breath. You know, and about 30 seconds of me sitting down, she walks by like, come on, lazy, get up and move something. And I'm like, I'm working on it, miss, I can only carry the blender. And she's just like, I... (sighs) (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> um, I'm sorry I kind of zoned out on that conversation and this is what brought me back to it I'm reading something else and one of our friends said "Who and who said men can't multitask and I realized I have no idea what you guys are talking about <laughs> uh, crap oh man yeah I have no idea what you just said Hey, Internet, Highway 47 here, and we have reached a milestone. It is, ouch, my fist in the corner of the desk. <laughs> Fuck that hurt. <laughs> I was all proud, and now, oh. Okay. Anyway. We've reached the end of season one of Star Trek The Next Generation. This is season one, episode 25, The Neutral Zone, and we are watching it here with you on this day, night, evening, morning, whatever it is. I am Shaggy B, and no matter what you thunk, you better make way for the hunk. That is Draco Funk. Wow. Last episode of the season, man. Howdy. Howdy. And he carries the biggest stick, the candle with the longest wick. He's making the clock tick, and yes, he's got the biggest introduction out of all of us. It's Scroderick. How's it going, man? It is going. I am totally not having an existential crisis right now. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Here's making me think about what I did all week and how many people I almost strangled. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ever, you ever like stand in front of a mirror and seriously ask yourself how many eleven-year-olds you could beat up at once? <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of week I've had. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, how, that's how you accomplish that. That's right. You sneak up on him. Uh, uh, anyway, we're watching Star Trek. <laughs> season one, episode twenty-five, the finale of season one, the neutral zone, in which many important things happen. All right, so I wanted to ask you guys and give you no prep on it, um, because I just thought of it. 
since this is the last last this since this is the last episode of season one, what is a memory of something from season one of Star Trek: The Next Generation that sticks out to you guys? The head explosion. <laughs> Which- <laughs> Because we totally didn't just see that. Yeah, because we, we definitely didn't watch that like 25 minutes ago at all. <laughs> what about you, Scroudrick? Um. Well, then again, you know, I just saw um, The Naked Now yesterday. Mm-hmm. Which, <clears throat> you know, now that we're talk- <laughs> we've been talking about being intoxicated, mm-hmm. it was kind of uh, interesting... With uh, them coming across the first ship <laughs> that right. had the virus, well, not virus, whatever it was, yeah, um, the, 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 the hydrogen the, molecules or whatever that were messing right. with them, mm-hmm. and uh, just that, you know, them having them on the hailing frequencies, and then all of a sudden, just you hear the the explosion as they uh, they release their emergency hatch, and they all get sucked out into space. You know? mm-hmm. That was just kind of the oh moment, the oh sh moment, you know. Right. I always kind of, I always find myself wondering if that's what it would sound like. You know. Yeah, but I, you know, we probably will never be in a position to find out. Right. And the only way that you know we could really know is by having a microphone, you know, in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I suppose it would depend on like the size of the hatch and all that, because you know, because because. You know, air takes time to flow through like any fluid. It takes time to flow through an opening. Um, but it would certainly be loud, you know, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I guess um, the, the thing that one, one of the things that's been sticking out to me about the first season now that I'm really thinking back about all of it um, was I, I am always thinking about those camera angles in the battle. You know, mm-hmm. when when Picard is hallucinating and the camera is sideways. Yeah. Like for some reason on this time through next generation, like that stuck out to me. Like it, it's a really, really good technique to show, you know, something's not right to just have the camera tilted. And it, it again, it always reminds me of, you know, the first Batman movie, you know, when, when whatever the, they had the villains on screen, the camera was crooked. And whenever it was the heroes, they were always, you know, square. Hmm. And I, I just, I, I just like the way they used it in that episode. I really, really do. So, um, this episode, the neutral zone is, and, and I think I can say definitively now that we have gone through and watched these carefully, you know, with, with the team of researchers that we have with us or whatever. <laughs> and <Team> <laughs> cheerleaders. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we've analyzed this closely with a team of sex perverts. <laughs> we've come to the conclusion. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the results are in, and I can say definitively that this really is my my favorite first season episode. This one right here, um, it feels the most like every other Next Generation episode. It feels more like a Star Trek episode than any other first season episode to me. It's well put together. Um, it has a strong B plot, which you know, as much as I don't like storylines that are too confusing, you know. They've all been kind of dry up to this point. They've all been one dimensional and slow. And this one is is good. It's more memorable this way. It keeps my focus. Um, and some interesting stuff happens in it. So I'm I'm excited that we're here, both for ending the season and because it's my favorite of the season. It's been a long road getting here. It's been a long road. God damn it! You know. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Well, and as, uh, you know, as the words were coming out of my mouth, I'm like, somebody is going to reference Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but uh, you know how, like, I've had this problem with season one, where a lot of times we'll go watch an episode, and it'll take me a while to be like, "What have I seen? Oh, it's this episode. Yeah, I actually remember this episode." <laughs> so, <laughs> well, there you go. We won't have one of those moments with this one because this one does stand kind of above the rest. It really does. And I'm really curious, Draco Funk, for you to tell us all about when this aired and, and what its ratings were. It aired May 14th. You were really careful. <laughs> 1988. In the a, year of our Lord. <laughs> 1988. It has an IMDb Sorry. rating of 7.5. So not the highest. Conspiracy was the highest. 
and 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 it seems like there have been a couple others that have hit that seven and a half or past it. I could be wrong. Uh, this has the same rating as one one zero zero one zero zero one. It is slightly under Data Lore, which has seven point seven. Yeah, and I would not rank Data Lore nearly as good as this. Um, it's also one under where no one where no one has gone before it. Seven point six. Yeah, I wouldn't call that as good as this one either. I would call, um, ooh, I'm getting a delivery. And that delivery is tequila. Not te- it's not tequila, it's Bailey's. And Fireball. <laughs> Bailey's. Yeah. Ooh, creamy. Well. To your health. Oh, that's the stuff. Damn it, yeah. no, I want to drink. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, I, I agree with you there. I think this episode is stronger than either of those. I would agree. I, I mean, I put it on par with uh, 110110. I think that episode's actually underrated a couple. I think so too. But again, you know, when I think, you know, which, which episodes are memorable from the first season, you know, they're, they're memorable, memorable for reasons, right? Like the pilot's memorable because it's the pilot. The Naked Now is memorable because it's, you know, unique. Um, Everything's fucked. <laughs> yeah. But what you go through and you think, like, you know, this one's memorable because it sucks. This one's memorable because it's boring. This one's memorable because nobody's acting worth a crap. This one's memorable because the lighting's terrible. This one, you know, whatever. <laughs> this one's memorable because of racism. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Right, right, and 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 this one though just feels like a Star Trek episode and a pretty good one at that. So, so I'm I'm just it, it's comfortable, it's familiar, it's pleasing. I'm glad to be here. As am I. Me too. Now that I un- All right. mute my mic, <laughs> 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 like, they're like, "Don't leave us hanging, man." <laughs> so. Um, we are watching this on Netflix, and Draco, would you like to tell them all what that means? So we've st- got our timer set to zero, and yes, we do. Shaggy B is going to give us a five-second countdown. Now, if you're watching this on another means, um, it'll work pretty much the same. But on Netflix, occasionally you get that skip intro button. We're not going to skip the intro, and neither should you. Specifically, you get it when the intro starts. Yeah. That's the occasion. I don't know. <laughs> um, but if you're watching this with the DVD or through Hulu or Amazon Prime or you bought the episode through YouTube. I don't know why you would do that. I'm Maybe you got a, gift, a YouTube gift card. Do they have those? I, I kind of wonder if like a Google Play gift card would work. I think it would because it prompted me for Google Pay when I went to uh, check out the Star Trek movies at one point. Hmm. Yeah, so there are many methods. Use whichever one you feel most comfortable with. Yes, and enjoy it with us as we watch along. Um, is there anything else to add before we start? Um, not at the moment. Okay. I will add, actually, um, that we <laughs> have talked about loosely, and we haven't finalized our plans yet, but we have talked about taking about a two-week break from Star Trek episodes at the season break, because we want to tweak a couple things for season two, um, polish what we do just a little bit, add a little more to it, um, and also because we want to do kind of a reflective episode um, where we you know, go back and look at what we've watched. And because we intend to do Star Trek The Motion Picture as a celebration of finishing Season 1. So um, look for Star Trek The Next Generation Season 2 to resume in two to three weeks. um, And with those other things to happen in the middle. And at some point, the three of us need to like actually discuss what we're going to do for our summation sort of episode. But that doesn't have to be right now. Yes. Yes. All right. We ready to start? All right. This is Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1, Episode 25, the season finale, (laughs) titled The Neutral Zone. And we are starting it off in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bang. Oh, man. Feeder. Hmm. Emergency conference? Mm-hmm. 
What? Jesus? What? We gotta save that. We gotta save that tractor beam in energy. Yeah, didn't you attend the academy lecture? I mean... Yeah, you'd think they'd be interested in investigating that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, Riker's just like, ah, f*** it, it's old junk, you know? Yeah. I don't want him to see you guys outside. <laughs> Data yeah, just I'm smiled. I'm sure it's pressurized. <laughs> yeah. It's from Earth, of that course might, it's safe. Yeah. Why is there gravity on it? Yeah, didn't figure that out before you went. <laughs> Getting power from an ancient sun. I love that it's from Earth and they sent two non humans. Mm hmm. Well, I could, you know, they could have taken more advantage of data and not needing oxygen you know it's like let's send just him right he's super strong doesn't need you know uh <laughs> damn dwarf <laughs> Sorry, how, do, how do door ancient earth doorknob oh shit con <laughs> this probe is on its way to SETI Alpha 6 Mm-hmm. or 5 sorry well <laughs> this is SETI Alpha 5 exactly SETI Alpha 6 exploded 6 months after they left Amir that's right the explosions shifted the orbit of that planet <laughs> but yeah imagine if this would have been more oh, augments man, that would have nope. been a uh, that's what happens when yeah. you break the seal uh, <laughs> they just get dehydrated then. <laughs> it's it's true. Should have had more water before they went to bed. Now they're just slumped in the bottom. You know? Yeah. This one is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this one is a little too hot. Check it out. She's naked. Man, she was hot. <laughs> <laughs> for the audience at home that's a reference to an anecdote that we were telling don't skip the intro by the way yeah but we're not just saying she was hot randomly because we're pigs we said it because we're referencing a guy that we used to know who was a pig who would always say that and he was also an idiot yeah so idiot if you're listening you're an idiot and i hate you <laughs> i mean you know, I don't hate the guy. No, but... actually, no. He's kind of dumb, though. <laughs> he was a likable dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, I had to step out for a minute, but I'm back. Okay. I didn't miss anything, did I? You didn't skip the intro, did you? Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> There's that button. Now it's gone. Um, you're way behind us then. I don't think I am. Whoosh. Whoosh. LeVar Burton as Jordy LaForge. Yeah, I'm right with you. Okay, okay, good. Sweet. <laughs> and Denise Crosby <laughs> as Tasha Yar. They didn't have the budget to, you know, do a new intro. Imagine being like some huge Denise Crosby fan. And like, I haven't been able to watch any of her stuff. And then like, <laughs> you catch the last three episodes. Where is she? <laughs> She's Aww. she's hanging out with um, Wesley because he wasn't in the last episode, and I'm pretty sure he's not in this episode. He's been sobbing in his quarters for three episodes. Natasha, like Jesus, shut up, Wesley. <sighs> the neutral zone. Hey, Gold Ducats in this one. Um, uh, Mark. Alamo or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leon Rippy. Rimpy. Rippy. There he is. Gold Ducat. That's not him. 
That's so they've been there for hours. Um, yeah, apparently they had to study her. Mm-hmm. Let it go. I mean, last time this happened on an Enterprise, it turned out okay. Full of people. <laughs> we can't make the captain wait. I'm sure he won't understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's just human life. We have to wait for Data to get back. Oh, wait, he's already here. <laughs> oh, shit. Full impulse. <laughs> Whoosh. Whoosh. Point two. Romulans. Romulans always attack at point two. Oh man, you remember the Tomate incident, don't you? She's wearing different clothes. Mm -hmm. I think. Maybe she's just sitting down so she doesn't have cleavage. <laughs> That's a good idea. We sent one ship, they sent 50. Of, yes, one ship full of children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you may not know this yet, but every time you use force, you fail in that ship. They have pointy ears. Yeah. And kind of weird forehead ridge things and bowl cuts with sideburns. They're, they're, they're basically Vulcans just with emotion. They're, they're like the American gladiators of Vulcans. They're like the Lutherans <laughs> of Vulcans. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's funnier, though. <laughs> they just like here doctor take these uh i i gotta go bye yeah <laughs> Don't you remember that? Yeah, I remember when people were afraid of dying. Primitive weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> now people welcome it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> I love those like potpourri jars full of random colored liquids in the back. Got to drink sometime. Yeah. How dare you save their lives? Yeah. Mm hmm.
<laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> he didn't know that at the time. Damn it. I've taken a special interest in this one. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, it'll help. Because, you know, data can't handle three, you know, scared humans. Yeah. With, you know, liver failure and <laughs> emphysema. Yeah. <laughs> Heart conditions. Yeah. The first thing they need to see is Worf. Yeah, he goes booga booga and the dude has a heart attack and dies again. You know, I want booga booga to mean something in Klingon. <laughs> you know, something like I want to be your friend, but they have to yeah. shout it. You know, <laughs> booga, booga. Did, you, did you intend to start a mating ritual? Yes. No. <laughs> oh my god, I'm naked. Hi. Hey, it's the quirky Star Trek music. Good job, Worf. You killed her. Oh, shit. <laughs> Minorities on the starship? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm really sure they should have handled that a lot better. Yeah, like, not bring Worf. Ancient disc. <laughs> uh, oh. Ralph off. Originally, he was going to be played by um, the guy who did Harry Mudd, but he died a couple weeks before this. Did he die of a heart attack? I I don't know. Because <laughs> that would be really <laughs> ironic. The tribute to him. <laughs> they changed it. Yeah. <laughs> and my drink's empty. <laughs> Worf, get him some champagne. That's no longer my job. Throw him on an airlock. I was going to say that. Put him in the brig. Got it. Oh, hey, it's a skirt thing. I, okay, it's a woman wearing a dress. I don't want to just say it's a skirt thing and make you think that I'm... Okay. It's the first time they actually give a year. It might be the only time they give a year for the current time in Next Generation or Deep Space Nine or Voyager, but they base everything off of that in like the Star Trek encyclopedias. Just say he's an alien. Exploded in your butt instead. Three, wait, 370 years ago. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. 
<laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> You know, I kind of wish they would have followed up with these people at some point in the future. <laughs> like, just been like, you know, how are they doing? Oh, you know, he's still a f*** up, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, it, it, it would be a really cool arc if that guy actually turned into Gul Dukat. And, like, Gul Dukat <laughs> never was actually a Cardassian at all. <laughs> like, he just, he's just like, these people can be exploited. And he, like, did the whole thing. That, that, that's not Mark Alamo. No. Oh. Yeah. I don't recognize about the makeup and after like whiskey. Yeah, yeah. it'll be all right. Yeah, that's Peter Mark Richmond. Oh, okay. He played Dunwell in The Naked Gun Two and a Half. Oh, nice. Now it's the same suit. She was just sitting weird before. <laughs> she didn't know the Picard maneuver to pull the excess down a little bit. Yeah. Need to cinch up her thong. She's been practicing the racket maneuver, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Throwing one leg over. Throwing one leg over and sitting on down. Don't you hate when, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I hate having to be the one to initiate all the time. <laughs> I know, right? You know, it's just, I mean... Am I right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> it's just locker room talk. <laughs> I do like me a dirty martini. Thought we were watching an episode of Firefly there with the music cue. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Those are some big olives. Those are the kind of olives you want in a martini. Didn't they win the World Series like a few times, like right after this? Well, they were doing pretty bad back in the eighties, late eighties. Okay. I remember them in the nineties, like doing okay. Just sit around, and off. Let's show them the holodeck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, forget all that and give me a couple whores. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a hooer. We're kind of in the middle of a military engagement right now, so you might want to calm your shit. Exactly. Pit woofies. Oh. Yep, see, there you go. Let's show them the holodeck. <laughs> <laughs> that way we don't scar anybody on the ship. <laughs> I want to believe they did like 12 takes of that, and he just made up words every time, and they picked their favorite. <laughs> Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, well, you haven't seen what they do in their off time. He's come out of the bathroom. There's whole staff in there, and he was in there. 
He had to, you know, that's, log the cap or yeah. That's why data is the closest to the doorway. Except they have one of your lieutenants from the future. In another universe where you're a lot stronger. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that's why they would respond with overwhelming force to their ship showing up like, oh, (laughs) exactly. We must use our inspiration to roll initiative. Monkey see, monkey do. (laughs) Isn't there a QE3 being built right now? Well, I don't f*** off. <laughs> oh. Everybody shut up. I have an erection. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ninja Sex Party. I don't know. I mean, I've met... Well, I haven't met, but... I know of... I'm one degree of separation away from, you know, reasonably intimate knowledge of, like, one of the former Army Chiefs of Staff. Oh, he's been a very nice retirement house for somebody that was fairly high up in the military. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I know some lieutenant colonels who do way better than I ever hoped to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're Calvinists here. Shouldn't I? I'm going to kill you if you don't shut up, aren't I? It's crying. Oh, let's get you hooked up with our ship's counselor. <laughs> Maybe you should have done oh, that a while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, instead of Worf. 
Oh, uh, you know, they have enough staff, they should have somebody with them all the time. See, you say what you actually mean. Treat humans like humans. They respond like humans. Yeah, the half human can handle it. Now they gave him quarters. Apparently. Yep. See the Constitution class? Yeah, it's the one that used to be in uh, Picard's ready room until they put the model of the of the uh, Stargazer in there. Oh, no. He was in one of the other pods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's got some shoulder pads going. Oh, you know, fashion trends come and go and come and go and come and go and come and go and come and go. (laughs) Yeah. No entry found for what are their names? <laughs> Wake up with coffee, go to sleep by taking melatonin and Benadryl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my routine. <laughs> yeah. Grab her butt. That's what he did. Roll with the punches. <laughs> Wish you could read all the. Apparently, um, her son married Ginger and then Marianne. Ah, I get it. Was he a professor? No, but his children were like Denise C. Michael D. Will W. Mm. I'm in. And Blackjack Hoogers. (laughs) Yeah.
feel like I got some brain damage from the lack of oxygen, you know? We're safe. <laughs> now, if only your one friend would understand this, this fucking terrifying. Yeah, exactly. An unconventional attack. <laughs> a great explosion. Barf. A great force ripped it off the planet. Barf. Full impulse. Does it sit in the woods? Yeah. Yeah. You march right up there and you show them who's boss. Put that asshole in the brig. Mm hmm. <laughs> Nobody seems to care. Uh -oh. My sensors don't. Too bad it isn't the old style turbo lift that has the handle you have to grab. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he would have never been able to figure it out. <laughs> uh oh. In the force.
Uh oh. Uh oh. And one of the best starship designs ever. And they're bigger than you. Yes. Mm. I like the security guards are just so. They're in fact way bigger than you. I love how in future episodes, the warbirds are nowhere near that huge. They don't speak. Clearly, because you're still there. <laughs> there's there's Mark Alamo. Uh, okay. I mean, you, you kind of do. <laughs> you have a treaty. <laughs> Bring him on as the arrogance officer. <laughs> yeah. I know who did it. I know who did it. Mm-hmm. And if we feel like it, and it's Tuesday, and <laughs> we get an extra scoop of ice cream. Yeah, that's Mark Alemo. Mm -hmm. Bum 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 bum. Yeah. Get him off your face. Get him off your mom's face. Oh. 
they were, she wasn't on the she was doing this instead of helping on the bridge where she could have she just her genealogy reports not 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 lot Romulans were there she wasn't a, okay Da 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 Well, you don't get to boss around the little people anymore, you asshole. <laughs> yeah. 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 That shows in later episodes. <sighs> <laughs> he didn't say no. He could sound just like Willie Nelson and Hank Williams and Johnny Cash, all singing together at the same time. <laughs> Put him yeah. on a slow freighter. Yeah. <laughs> Into season two. Ha <laughs> ha. I sir, full impulse. <laughs> <laughs> so So little time. Hooray! And now we have left the first season. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe in a way. But also really relieving. <laughs> <laughs> well, we now we have to get through like the first couple episodes of the second season. Yeah. Let's see. Season one, the weird or season one, episode one, the weird pregnancy episode or something. Yep. Totally. Sure is. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's watch this again <laughs> and then skip that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's that one kind of sucks. I mean, there was uh, there, there was no consent there, man. That's true. <laughs> Hashtag me too, you know. Um, but no. What about this episode? What do you think? It it was a. I felt like instead of trying to, well, they did while they were introducing a new, um, antagonist. It was nice to bring back the Romulans, mm -hmm. because the last time they were seen on TV was in the Enterprise incident. Yeah, which was. Well, like a full twenty years prior, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess they were they they were in like a couple episodes of the animated series, but mm -hmm. they weren't in any of the movies up to this point. This was still eighty eight, so it was before Star Trek V. Um, they definitely were not in, yeah, the first four Star Trek movies at all. I don't even know if they were mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Romulan ale, come on. That's that's true. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I wish they would have had Romulans in, you know, at least one of the movies. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm uh well they were in Nemesis, but you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Star I wasn't Trek wasn't counting them. <laughs> yeah. And you know, Star Trek colon Star Trek. Um <laughs> colon movie film for theaters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, that one. Um yeah, but but I like this one. Um and, and it holds true, you know, this held my attention the whole way out. Um, I, I got a feeling that I haven't gotten yet from any other of the Star Trek episodes we watched. Did you get the fizz? But I, ha- <laughs> I didn't get the fizz. <laughs> but but I, I have gotten this from the Orville episodes that we've watched where um, where I find myself invested enough in the story that I forget to say anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and and to me that that's a mark of quality because I care about what's going on. You know, like that's kind of like a thing that should happen when you're watching TV is you should give a fuck what you're looking at, right? Yeah. So, so this gave me that, which the rest of season one didn't do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm, no, I like this one. I like the, I like the, the writing is very good in this one. Um, the two subplots start out very, very different. And they, well, the, the, the two plots and they, they interweave themselves well. Um, the only time it was awkward at all was there toward the end when we suddenly realized that Counselor Troy wasn't on the bridge helping out with the confrontation with the Romulans, where, you know, someone who can read emotions might have really been useful. Mm-hmm. Oh, they had, you know, asshole man there. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Um, and he, I get, you know, he... Fill the spot. <laughs> right, and he did her job better than she would. She'd just go, they're hiding something. And then, you know, sit there and Push your chest out more. Um, and and I, I love the design of the Romulan. I love the train going by my house again. But um, just just overall, very very well done. I I, I just this is my favorite first season first season episode by far. It really is. Oh yeah, no. I wish that uh, you know on one of the episodes where they have to visit Earth, though, like Data would just happen to run into like the hillbilly dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I just want him to revisit that in a small, unimportant way in the future. But you know, can't have everything. Like, like we see what Tennessee is like in the future. You know, yes. <laughs> and Data, you know, awkwardly trying to be his, you know, like buddy on stage or whatever. Yeah, Brent Spiner in like a you know a flannel shirt and tight pants with a huge belt buckle and cowboy boots. And and you know he could bring his violin. That's true. Yeah. yeah, he could he could fiddle along. Yeah, that's true. Fiddle it up in there. That's right. So yeah, good episode. Um, and and uh, with that, we are done with season one of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Um, and it's been a ride. We're, I, you know, we've we we have only throughout this whole thing, you know, our our little experiment. We we had to delay one release by one week. Um, of an episode, and otherwise we've been able to do this whole thing. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of an accomplishment. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm glad with what we've done. I think we've, we've made some good stuff here. Um, you know, hopefully some people start listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but I'll stick around for it regardless. So absolutely. So join us for season two of Star Trek: The Next Generation in a couple weeks. Um, we'll start it. We'll be releasing it on Fridays, like always. In the meantime, we're going to do some conferencing and decide how we want to do a, a wrap up episode for season one. And then we'll have Star Trek, the motion picture somewhere in there. And of course we have the Orville coming out on Wednesdays. Um, we're going to be, we just, in. we just finished season one. What? We do finish uh, it. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, by the time this recording comes out, we will have, that's true. We haven't recorded the finale of season one of the Orville yet, but we... uh, I was afraid. No, no, we it's the next one in line, but we will have recorded that by the time you hear this because it will have been released two days before this is released. Right. That's why I said yeah. that. Right. Time warps. Yes. <laughs> um and then you know look for one offs as as you know as often as, as we do them. Um so yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the ride with us. It's been a fun like five months or so. And uh, you know, see you on the flip side. Later. Take care, everyone. Keep it real. Don't fake the Draco funk. Don't funk the Draco fake.
<laughs> Don't f*** dragons. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, all right. Dance to me.